loud as I come Ooh. Busting in your line, cracking helmets in Ooh. I bring the pain, so what you gon' do? Stand there and just get shook out ya Go clean out your locker, I'm out to get ya Cause I just popped ya, you can't take the pressure You might as well quit cause you just can't last Mad at 2000, put your face in the grass And your pride in the dirt, so put on a skirt If you come on the field and don't wanna get hurt Just bruised and beaten, all black and blue And it's been like that since Madden 92 Welcome back to the show with everybody with Buccaneer Blake Sports with your host, Mr. Buccaneer Blake himself. <clears throat> now, I wanted to wait a while. I know a lot of people like my buddy Daryl and a couple guys wanted me to put out a uh, tape on the draft picks we got. I said I didn't want to do it right away because I wanted to gather as much information as I can to give it to you guys. Like I told you before, I like to do this on my own to talk about stuff, but I also want to educate those who don't know who these guys are or what the plans are with these things. So, let me go with my schedule, what I have right now. I said, first things first, let's check out this shot here of who you guys wanted us to draft in the draft. Yes, this is a mug shot of Johnny Manziel, the savior, the greatest NFL quarterback, the Tim Tebow, the Peyton Manning, the, the Tom Brady... The, the, what is the word that they used? An NFL-ready quarterback. The savior of the Browns. There he is. Mugshot for beating up a female. What a punk. This goes back to show you again that these scouts don't know anything. Please stop listening to them. You can, you can take their advice about what kind of player they are. But don't fall into the hype like some teams do when you end up drafting this guy, a guy like this in the first round. Who should have went later than Russell Wilson who went in the third round. Who did everything like Russell Wilson but threw blood from the pocket better and played quarterback better. Who only had, who's like, whose life expectancy in NFL was to be a career backup but Johnny Manziel was a superstar. I just wanted to take a shot that I just like being right about guys like that. I, I, he, he was a bum. And he always will be a bum. Now, let's moving on. I said, let's go over the draft picks. And we're going to start with number one at pick nine. Vernon Hargroves. Of course, his nose in pick nine. We moved back to pick 11 with the Chicago Bears. They moved it up and took a, clo- a guy. One of was was Floyd out of... Uh, out of uh, Georgia. Great pass rusher. You'll see his goose pretty monstrous. But anyway, we moved back two picks, which we wanted to do. We wanted to move out of the top ten and acquire more picks so you can move up and get guys you want. Plan worked. We got Vernon Hargrove's hometown guy. Uh, I'll give you a shout out here, Mr. Michael Newman. You put me on a lot of guys that are from this this area, like Nelson Aguilar and and Vernon Hargrove's himself and Mr. Vernon Hargrove's uh, the second. You did a great job teaching your son and uh, keeping him out of riff raff when he was younger and he went on and handled his business went to Florida got a great education and had a great football career got kid seems to know what he's talking about I've watched a lot of interviews with Vernon Hargraves and uh, <clears throat> he commends uh, I think I talked about this already he commends uh, Amari Cooper torturing him so he was better better equipped to play uh, Laquan Treadwell two receivers are a little bit different one's a little faster than the other and a, and a more equipped route runner but Loco on Twitter was a good receiver as well. Um, I'm happy with the pick. As I believe he'll start uh, day one with uh, Brent Grimes. Or maybe go down to nickel or switch back between both. It's not. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen here. What I think might happen to the D. I'll, uh, what's going to happen with the defense, I'll explain later with the later picks with Noah Spence. Well, the next pick with Noah Spence, I'll explain here about what I think what that is. Uh, again, Brandon Hargrove's hometown kid, a guy I know, a co-worker of mine, Michael Newman, senior. Uh, I had a relation, I, mean, I had, you know, uh, he knew the kid, he knew about him. And I guess it's, it's a great feeling to see a kid like that you know, watch and grow up and stayed out of trouble and moved on to be successful in his first round pick in the draft. Good job, Mike. Keep doing what you're doing out there in Tampa. I know the stuff that you're doing out there for... Uh, no, Parks and Recreation, you and Chris, uh, the stuff that you do flies a lot under the radar. A lot of people, you will never get commended for it. A lot of it's uh, self-accomplishment, and you should be proud to be changing young people's lives and putting them on a different path. Because 
I could, uh, me and Mike talk about this all the time. I said the world's kind of backwards. We talk about things that we should do, but we don't actually do them. We know it's the right thing, but we choose not to do the right thing. There's no money in saving the world. So the people who chose to try to do it, you fly under the radar, and it doesn't go unnoticed because you see things like this that happens. So congratulations to you guys, and I want to give up. What I what what I could give to you is is going on here and taking time and, and saying thank you for the stuff that you do for for other people. Not even myself and say thank you for other people that you're doing and changing people's lives, as it's important. Um, the second round pick, I honestly didn't think we would pick them. I'm not quite sure if he was on the radar for us to pick. I I thought we might have got Kevin Dodd, but uh, Noah Spence. <clears throat> picked up Noah Spence. I wanted Noah Spence. He could play out of the. I think he comes out of uh, the stance better at a two-point stance, like a standing sprinter stance instead of a three-point stance. Doesn't look quite natural at it. That's just my opinion. I, you have to ask him personally. I'm trying to get a couple of those guys on the show and get a little bit more elaborative story. Um, <clears throat> most most of the thing that you know Noah Spence for is, of course, less about football, more about his drug problem. He failed to. Uh, drug test at Oklahoma State which led to him getting kicked out finished his career at Eastern Kentucky which he played well, beat tackles beat actually, what's even funnier is in the clip you'll see up there one of the offensive tackles he beats is Donovan Smith so uh, that'll be funny watching them two go at it in practice um, so I'm happy to have him here, he's got a chip on his shoulder and uh, I hope he could create pass about pressure because I think um with him there, what, what, well, like yeah, I said, I was going to explain about the defense. Well, I think it might be a 4-3 over uh, Quan. And when you have a 4-3 lineup, D lineman, D lineman, D lineman, D lineman, 5 technique, 3 technique, 1 technique, 5 technique. And then 4-3 outside, outside, middle. What I think it'll do, the line will shift down. And you'll have the outside linebacker up at the line of scrimmage almost uh, as another like a fifth defensive lineman with at this you can drop back the end on that side you can drop back a Jock Jacquez Smith he's almost small enough to play a linebacker and he can come off the edge and you can run stunts in that with him coming off the edge he'll be more of a I don't think he'll be a day one star but a very situational pass rusher being because you have two way players like William Golston and uh, Robert Ayers that could play defensive tackle and defensive end <clears throat> so a lot of versatility with the defensive line again a speculation coming from me hopefully that's what will happen and it might work out so we'll see how it goes um Second round pick, uh, a very controversial pick. Uh, people wanted to give us Fs for the pick, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to say this. The, the, this Our second round pick, technically our third round pick, was uh, Robert Arreo from Florida State, the number one most accurate kicker in college football history, period, number one. And with these three picks, you actually picked up the top player at each position, pass rusher, corner and kicker but why kicker in the second round why waste a second round pick on a kicker <sighs> all right you could say it's a second round because it is does say second round but in reality it was our third pick i said we didn't give up anything to get it well what do you mean you didn't give up anything to get it you used your you traded up to get a second round pick and you're not wrong by saying that we used our third round pick that we were going to use in the next round anyway and we used the fourth round pick that wasn't ours to begin with to move back two spots to acquire the same player we we're going to get. So in reality, we used the third pick on a player we, were, we weren't going to wait for in the third round, which he was projected to go in the third round anyway. Pick players that, that you need to fit your system, not who where they think you are. Because I could go on all day about players that went uh, early in the draft that shouldn't have went. Pa uh, Patriots picking up... Um, uh, the cornerback kick returner out of Alabama, the way he should be like a fifth round pick. Uh, the defense, the Panthers picking up the defensive tackle from Louisiana Tech. It was like a second, third round pick. Pick players that fit your system. We lost games, a lot of games the past three years over kicking issues. And we were, if you, uh, Tampa Bay fans have short memory. I don't, I, I told you I love football. I pay attention to all aspects of it. 
you forgot already that we were paying a punter $3 million or whatever ridiculous contract it was that we got from the Panthers. And we paid him that money because we didn't have a kicker that was adequate and adequate enough to kick the kicks in, out of the back of the end zone. So we paid because we're basically paying a punter to punt balls and to kick off 3 to $4 million a year, in which he's gone now. And now we got Rayo that could kick field goals and do kickoffs and still have our own punter and not overpaying people. It was a situation that we kiss playing kicker carousel, and everybody says like it's not important. You can just keep risking picking up guys out at, at what expense to keep losing games because of it. <clears throat> if we, there was three games we lost it last year because of kicking, Houston, Texas is one of them. I was at that game. It was the most painful thing to watch, watching us miss field goals, and, and the fans know we we weren't even trying to win. They weren't even heckling me. He said, "Damn, you guys aren't even trying to win. They missing field goals." It didn't help. We were one for. One for 11 on third downs, and Mike Evans and, and Jameis Winston were off because of Mike was injured before that. But that's a whole other conversation entirely. But we finished 9-7 and seven with those three games that we lost. And uh, I'm not mad at it. If, if, so, if it's going to help the team, people are going to want to see uh, us fail with that kick, and it's fine. That's kind of why I like being a Buccaneer fan to begin with, because people don't like us. It's we were undermined. Kind of why I like the Charlotte Hornets were undermined. I, I I could easily do what you do or what most people do is just jump on a team that's winning and pretend I've uh, I could fake it because I know probably much more football than most people and pretend I knew all about this team from the get go. But that's whatever. Um. And mind you that we were criticized on a pick last year because of that in the second round. If you forgot already, we traded back in the second round to get this guy as well. His name was Ali Marpet. At one point in the season, around mid-season, Ali Marpet moved all the way up to at least the rank, the second-ranked offensive guard in the league, only falling behind uh, Mike Upati before injury. So... If you're making the right picks and they're working out, you got plans for these players, then let's let it play out. Let's play with an open mind instead of being negative all the time. I'll tell you about these live with Bucks fans. And like I said, it's my my football self, my my ego. I have to get over that people just in this world are just not intelligent. They don't want to be intelligent. They want to come out there and be drunk and belligerent. And that's what they want to be. And they want to call themselves Buck fans, and I and I'm sure every team has this. That's why I kind of like going to other games in other cities, and I can meet guys and people that are like me. They're optimistic about things, or are not. They do don't choose to be ignorant, and and it just I I know I can relate to much more people than myself. That it's just coming too common. Common sense is not common. Let me stop rambling because I'm moving up on time here and I got a couple more picks to go over. <clears throat> so, Robert Rail, we'll see. Um, dude, okay, he'll fix the past couple of years kicking problem issues that we've had. And like I said, we'll see what happens. It's a wait and see now. He'll be, Of course, he'll be the starter. And it look like we'll have four starters just like last year. Uh, it'll be him, Robert Rail, of course, he'll be the number one kicker. Um, Vernon Hargraves. Uh, oh, let me not spoil the story. Let me get to the rest. But um, <clears throat> uh, another uh, the third round we skipped the third round because we had a second. So the fourth round pick would be Ryan Smith out of North Carolina Central. I'm from Fayetteville, North Carolina. A lot of my friends went to uh, North Carolina, um, Greensboro, uh, Aggies, and some went to Central. Central is not under the radar to me, much like Appalachian State. These are schools that win national titles out there for these lower. Division two, Division three schools that you don't hear about, <clears throat> but they win titles all the time out there. They just weren't good enough, or whatever. Or the grades weren't good enough to get to D one schools. Um, I predicted this pick once I saw him. I knew he was going to either play safety or he was going to play nickel or kick returner or whatever like that. He's, he's just a great athlete who has bothered by a lot, uh, a couple injuries um, earlier in his career at there at NC Central. Um, he runs in the high four threes. Uh, when I may say high, like four three nine, four three eight, uh, low four fours, four uh, four four three, uh, four four one in the forty yard dash. Um, he's he's not going to be a, an exact finished product because you know you got to find the ball, uh, and that's going to be a huge adjustment because of the talent level from there to the NFL. 
<clears throat> and, and he's going to be a little raw playing out there and playing a real versatile role, learning a lot of things at one time. That's why a lot of the issues with player are neck up, like Jason Light said. It's a lot of that physical ability is one thing. Uh, all the players out there have the physical ability for the most part. What's going to set you apart from everybody is your uh, mental capacity, your cerebral cortex, your gray matter. It's, that's, that's what's going to set you over top of everybody else. Um, the fifth round pick, uh, Caleb Beninat, uh, Nigerian native. Um, offensive tackle, going to play screen player between guard and uh, tackle. Uh, his is an interesting story. His parents are was the son of two prime ministers of, of Nigeria. Uh, well, I'm going to say prime minister, ministers of Nigeria. Uh, the way he was introduced into football was, you know, how when you say football here, the uh, first thing that comes to your mind is uh, the pit skin, 11 on 11 <clears throat> pads. Um, in Africa, it's soccer, football, F U T B O L. Of course, uh, he came out there and you show up, his mom signed him up and you came out there. It was a whole different thing. But he, he, I know a lot of guys like this when I lived in Philadelphia. He's, he's a lot of African people, a lot of Arabic people, a lot of people from other places that come here. They just want to fit in uh, and they just want to make friends. Uh, and, and that's what he did. That's what the people he knew was playing. And he, and he liked playing football. He likes taking challenges and took off from there. And here he is, drafted in the fifth round of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm happy to have you here, and uh, I hope everything works out for you. If you can reach out to me, I could help you out any way possible you can. Um, give you some advice about stuff. I'd be more than happy to do so. I've reached out to you uh, via Twitter and along with you with other rookies. And uh, I hope everything, I hope you play well, and I hope you become a fu uh, future here with Damar Dotson and uh, Shirellis, the tackles there. This looks like you might have to be replacing uh, one of them soon because they're both be free agents next year. Uh, another round six pick. I was actually surprised. I didn't know too much about this. Doesn't happen often, but his name is Devontae Bond. So I pull up tape on Devontae Bond. <clears throat> uh, tape doesn't blow up on you. He's, uh, I think he only played one year of high school football. Uh, played at Oklahoma sparingly, uh, injuries and stuff. Uh, and that's where Stryker was playing. Oklahoma Stryker was uh, that defense and linebacker that destroyed Alabama in the uh, bowl game. <clears throat> where they didn't play in the bowl game that one year, where they lost to Oklahoma, and they called them overrated, where the SEC versus uh, those at the Big 12 or wherever they were in the conference. Don't quote me on that. Um, <clears throat> Devontae Bond, he's a, uh, plays at 100 miles an hour a lot. Uh, but the part, when I, when I saw him picked up, immediately I thought, maybe he's a, he, maybe he's a good blitzer and a and a guy that comes off the edge a lot, and that's what it was. I think at the uh, the, the junior college wherever he, had, he was at, he had like eleven or twelve sacks that year before transferring to Oklahoma. So I would say, like, I'm, I like to see where he ends up with this. Um, maybe uh, I know it's going to be like a special teams player, and, and maybe work himself to a starting role playing with Daryl Smith. I like, I like to see what happens. It's hard to say right now. I have a lot of speculations about the defense. I'll get out there and check them out when they do camps and stuff, and. Uh, um, possibly have a different opinion at that point. Uh, and then my favorite one to go over. We're going to hear about 18 minutes. My favorite one. Most of you don't know. I told you I lost a lot of weight. I've been working extremely hard. Um, I sent Jason Light an email. I told him I could offer my services to play fullback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for two years. I could give him two solid years for that team. Because we lost Javorski Lane. Javorski Lane was injured and he has a lot of weight issues. I have good blows that know me. I have good hands. I could play I could play that spot. I'm a great blocker. But those dreams were diminished and shut down by a man named um, we drafted in the sixth round by a man named uh, Dan Dan Vitale. Now Mr. Vitale shattered my dreams of playing fullback for them. Or maybe H back or whatever that'd be nice. Who's I'm not saying it was gonna actually happen, but I did send a message to him. And then uh, Dan Vitale uh, was probably more used as a tight end than a fullback. He's a great blocker. Uh, he wore number 40, ironically, for Northwestern. Northwestern puts out a couple plays that you. That's another school people don't pay much attention to, but they play in a in a big conference. <clears throat> great hands, 
great blocker, can play fullback, can play halfback, can play tight end, so they just made up a name for him. You're going to hear this name a lot. It's called the superback position, and I'm sure it's going to carry over to the NFL, the superback. And um, he's from Chicago. He's a Bears fan. And I'm, I'm really interested to see how it goes. Remember I said four starters. He was another one. So I, I thought uh, Dan Vitale, Vernon Hargroves, uh, Robert Arreo, that's three, and maybe not four, maybe three. Maybe maybe Ryan Smith starts somewhere, beats somebody. I will see how that goes. But right now, you're looking at three starters from this draft. And we'll see how it turns out. But yeah, Dan Vitale is going to be a guy you need to watch. And it's probably my favorite pick in this draft besides the obvious ones. All the picks can't be the best ones in the first two rounds. But I think this pick was a special pick. and will be one to be remembered. This guy can play. He's got heart. He's got great worth at it. I hope to run into him. I hope to have him on here. As I, I like them stories. Most people do. But I'm running out of time here. I'm not trying to hold up too much longer. I've, I've rambled on far enough about certain subjects. And I'll end this topic as we always do. You're the master of everything you do in your life. What you do with your life is entirely up to you. Thank you guys for being here for me and supporting me. And, and ask me to put out videos and paying attention to everything. As I try to give it the best I can, 110%. Thank you guys. And, uh... God bless.